Welcome to Victorious Life Church. This is Christopher D. Collier, Senior Pastor. We are so thrilled to have you with us today. Do me a favor though, scan the QR code or go to our website, www.vlckc.com. Fill out the information we need from you and someone's gonna be in touch with you very soon. Once again, I am so excited about us embarking on this spiritual adventure together where winners are developed. Praise the Lord. My name is Ryan Allen and I'm your digital disciple, keeping you up to date with all things VLC. Here are the announcements for Sunday, April 14th. TNT Tuesday Night Class Series are finishing up this Tuesday, April 16th. We've had great time so far, so come on out and let's enjoy this last class together. 1 Corinthians 11 and 24, this do in remembrance of me. Communion will be served on 4th Sunday, April 28th, 2024. If you're unable to attend this in-person service, please just grab some juice and a piece of a cracker to participate with us in this communion. Come join the Married Couples Ministry on Saturday, April 27th from 1 to 6 p.m. for two stepping classes at the Sherwood Estates Home Association. Beginners, intermediate, or advanced dancers are welcome to learn or enhance their dancing abilities. Come on out and learn a two-step so you can join on the fun on the dance floor. Now, this is a fundraiser, so it's not just for married couples. It's open to anybody who would love to come, be a part, and help raise some money for the married couples ministry. Attention, VLC ladies. Let me hear you. I can't hear you, VLC ladies. There we go. The Women of Victory are inviting you to attend the Getting Through the Squeeze Luncheon on Saturday, May 4th at 11 a.m. Cost is $25. Please register at www.vlckc.com no later than Sunday, April 28th to confirm your attendance. Calling all past new members or anyone interested in joining our church. Sign up for the next new members class, which is a four-week series starting on Sunday, April 28th at 9 a.m. in room 217. Now, for more information, please see our instructors, deacon, and sister in law, or contact the church office. For more information on upcoming events at VLC, please visit our website at www.vlckc.com. Follow us on social media on our Facebook and Instagram pages at VLCKC. Now, let's get back to service. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is yours truly, uh, Pastor C.D. Collier, and I am excited about what God is going to say tonight through one of God's greatest generals, the Honorable Bishop Mark C. Talbert. The man has been in ministry for 40 plus years and I just felt in my heart to take this time for the next eight Tuesdays to go down memory lane and hear the preaching and the powerful word of God through the Honorable Bishop Mark C. Talbert. Do me a favor, tell everybody, get on the live stream, throw a watch party, and let's have a Throwback Tuesday with Bishop Mark C. Talbert. Yeah. Oh, look where he brought me from. Mm, he brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Oh, look where he brought me from. Y'all know that? Oh, look where he brought me from. Thank you, Jesus. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous land. Oh, look where he brought me from. And then the verse says, He brought me from a long way off. Hey, he brought me from a long way off. Where did he bring you from? Well, he brought me out of darkness. To this marvelous life, oh, look where he brought me from. One more time, put them hands together and just say, Look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Mm, yeah, he brought me out of darkness into. thought about that's a lot that's a whole song <laughs> mm, yeah. 
if you think about it, where he brought you from. Brought me out of darkness to this marvelous light. together give God a praise I bless you book of Joshua chapter number 24 the book of Joshua chapter number 24 the book of Joshua chapter number 24 God is good all the time all the time God is good and when you stop to think about where he brought you from Amen. And so part of that song goes with a little bit of something what I'm talking about this morning. Uh, the book of Joshua, chapter number 24. And uh, give me some keys while I'm reading here. Chapter number 24. And we're going to read verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we're going to skip down and read 8 and 9. 8, 9, and 10. Then we're going to skip down and read 13 and 14. We'll end up with verses 20 and 21. All right, you have it? Joshua, chapter number 24, verse 1. Let's read. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt, verse number eight. And I brought you into the land which, uh, of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan, and they fought with you. And I gave them into your hand that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Verse 9. Then Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. Verse 13. And I have given you a land for which he did not labor and cities which he built not and ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards, which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Verse 20. For if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, read verse 21 again. And the people said unto Joshua, but we will serve the Lord. Reach over and touch your neighbor and look him in the eye and, and tell him this. You have a choice to make today. Reach over and touch somebody else. Tell them, you have a choice to make today. That's what, that's what I want to talk about. I may get finished, I may not, but, but uh, you will be able to go back home and read all of that for yourself. Uh, Shechem was the ideal location for uh, this sermon that Joshua is giving. Joshua, who preceded Moses in leadership, is now 110 years old and ready to die. But God has instructed him to give one more sermon and tell his people that God ain't 
playing with you. So it's at Shechem that God promised Abraham uh, that his descendants would inherit the land. It is at Shechem that Jacob built an altar unto God. It was at Shechem that uh, the reaffirmation of the children of Israel to God had taken place before and now as Shechem sits here between Mount Ebal and Mount Gresham uh, they have all of these memories and now Joshua is telling them we are standing on holy ground and God is demanding that you give him your word you got to make a choice and so, as we have read in God's word, God chose Israel. Touch your neighbor and say, God chose you too. See, a lot of times we, we, we think that we think that, well, you know, I'm saved because my mama made me go to church. I'm saved because one day, you know, we sing them songs, went to a meeting one night, my heart wasn't right and all that, but God chose you. God chose Israel. God chose Abraham. Abraham was an idol worshiper. You can read it when you go home in this Joshua 24. He was an idol worshiper and God said to Abraham, leave Ur of the Chaldees and go to Canaan. And Abraham, though he is known as the father of faithfulness, his past is an idol worshiper. Everybody got a past. Everybody got a pass. <laughs> I don't care what you look like now. I don't care how prestigious you are now. I don't care how holy you are now. Everybody got a pass. And, and Abraham, even though he is known as the father of faithfulness, his past was an idol worshiper. Now, what, what is an idol worshiper? A, a, an idol is... The definition of an idol is a picture or object that is worshipped as a god, a form of appearance visible but without substance, an enchanted phantom, a lifeless object. And so an idol worshiper is really one who takes a picture an object and says that's my God and they bow they burn candles they burn incense and and who would serve a God that they could carry around not me because I need a God that can do something for me I'm not gonna serve no God I can put in my pocket and take wherever I go I got my God with me. I got mine with me too. But he ain't in my pocket. He ain't in my he ain't on my dashboard. He ain't dangling from my mirror. He's too great a God for that. And so the glory, the God of glory, appeared unto our father Abraham and said, I claim you for mine. And you might jot this down. Stephen in Acts 7 and 2 as they were stoning him he talked about being a descendant of Abraham and, 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 and he was reminding the Jews of their national identity and helping them to understand that their identity is an act of God's grace I am nothing without God I don't care what kind of papers, what kind of alphabets behind my name, what kind of dollar signs, I am nothing without God. Hallelujah. There was nothing special about the Jewish people. Nothing special about the Israelites. What made them special was God chose them. Reach over, touch your neighbor and tell him, you want to know what makes me special? Now tell him, God chose me. 
that, that's the only thing that makes you special. Because if God hasn't chose you, you be out there chasing the crack pipe too. You be out there doing all the other stuff that other people are doing. But what makes you special enough to sit in this place in your right mind and worship God is that God chose you. Now somebody is thinking, well, why don't he choose my brother? Hey, I, I love my brother, but thank God he chose me. That's between you and my brother. That's between you and my sister. That's between you and Uncle Bud. <laughs> See, sometimes we worry about stuff that we can't do nothing about. And the older you get, you need to learn how to leave stuff alone that you can't do nothing about and serve God for where you are and for what he's done for you. Ah, nothing special about us except God chose us and so that's why as Christians the, the, the term Christian uh, means follower of Christ we should never become boastful or prideful because we didn't find Jesus y'all know that old song we sing to Scarlett I found Jesus oh the inside you ain't found Jesus <laughs> Some of us, no, most of us, he brought here kicking and screaming. <laughs> he trying to get you and you're like, ah! <laughs> so we didn't find him. He brought us. He chose us. We didn't even choose him. He chose us. Oh, Lord. <sighs> and, and here's the, here's the thing. He chose you before the foundation of the world. See, we, we ask God some questions that God has no intention of answering. And if he ain't answered you by now, leave it alone. Some folks, you text them 10 times. If they ain't answered you, leave them alone. You done call them 50 times, leave them alone. <laughs> so in Ephesians uh, 1 and 4, and don't go there, God calls us his select. He, he selected us. And, and so God chose us. Now here's, here's the sovereignty of God. There were some Jews that were put into the Colosseum arenas and were attacked and eaten and destroyed by lions. God chose some to live and God chose some to die. Well, how could a gracious, loving God do that? Because he's God. And whatever he chooses you for, he gives you the grace to endure. Ah, uh, see, we, we like to hear the good stuff, but you got to understand it all when it comes to what you can understand about God. Because there are some things you will never understand about God. Ah, uh, and so Paul said, I count it an honor to suffer for Christ's sake. And if God allows you to suffer, he gives you suffering grace. Mm -hmm. He gives you enough grace to be able to suffer gracefully, to endure hardness gracefully, to go through what he has determined you must go through and still keep a good attitude. We don't like to hear that. And so in, in this text, uh, Joshua is talking and uh, uh, Joshua, God says to Joshua in, in verse four, and I gave unto you Isaac, Jacob and Esau, All right, and I gave unto Isaac, Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it, and Jacob, his children went down into Egypt. Now, if you recall the scripture, God said, I didn't say this, God said, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. But here in this book of Joshua, he says, I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. So why would God give a child to Isaac that he was going to hate? Because he's sovereign. Do what he want to do. You can ask him questions all day long. People say, don't question God. You can ask him anything you want to ask him. He ain't going to answer if he don't want to. Because some things, even if he answered it, you wouldn't understand it because his answer is from eternity to eternity. And so because you can only see what you can see, 
you wouldn't even understand if God gave you the answer. Uh, and, and so uh, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. God chose Jacob. Paul called these choices God's purpose according to election. God has purpose and he purposes some to live and some to die, some to suffer and some to be lights in another area, but it's God's choice. So you can be saved and still chosen to suffer. It wasn't your choice. <laughs> And, and so Esau became the ancestor of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Jacob became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. And eventually the children of Israel went to Egypt where God made them a great nation, but they were in captivity for 400 years. So even though Jacob was the chosen, they still were in captivity. Oh, Lord. And, and, and so uh, in Joshua 24 and 5, he says, I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt. I sent Moses and his brother Aaron because I knew Moses was going to get out of there and, and start making excuses. Well, I can't talk, God. So he said, I sent Moses and Aaron. And then I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterwards, I brought you out. See, God's saying, you got to make a choice because I know what I'm doing. I'm in control of this thing. So God is preaching through Joshua and he's saying to them, I'm sovereign. I sent Moses and Aaron to Egypt so that I could bring my wrath on Egypt. God, in his rationale, he does not do things haphazardly. He does things on purpose, for purpose, but then he sets things up so that when he does something, he at least can justify it to himself. And because his thinking and his decisions take in every account of all historical factors of all peoples, then when he makes a decision, it's not just haphazard. Hmm. So he says, I wanted to bring my wrath on Egypt, but I had to have a reason. <laughs> and that's all part of his plan. And so we don't understand it. That's why we have to walk with God. And sometimes even when you walk with God and you trust God, you can spend 20, 30, 40, 50 years with God and after that 30th year you say, oh, now I see. And it's been something you've been reading for 20, 30 years. And so God says, when you trust me, you are always provided for in my plan. I took you out of Egypt into the wilderness, but I brought water out of a rock because there ain't no water in the wilderness, in the desert, but I already had a plan to bring water out the rock. See, we ought to be able to read this and say, well, the wilderness that I'm in, God must have a plan for me. God must have something planned for me. I know I'm in a wilderness, but I know that I'm not going to die in this wilderness because God has already made some provisions in the wilderness for my life. He dropped bread out of, out of heaven. They called it manna. Bird that you can hardly shoot with a shotgun. He let the quail come sit down on the ground and they just clubbed him, dressed him and ate him. In the wilderness, but provided for by the plan of God. And that's what he's trying to get us to understand. I got you in a place, but I'm providing for you. And in my provision, I expect you to praise me. Oh, Ah, all right, let's go down. Joshua 24 and 8, because I'm trying to get finished here. 24 and 8, read with me. And I brought you into the land of the 
Amorites which dwelt on the other side Jordan and they fought with you and I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land and I destroyed them from before you. So God said, I gave them into your hand and I gave you the power to destroy them. Here's what you gotta understand. There are some enemies in your life that God brings you into their land to destroy them, but he will not destroy them for you. Now, it doesn't mean that you pick up a gun or a knife, but it means that you have to have enough power to speak your destiny. You have to have enough power to put people in certain places so that you help them to understand Understand, I'm God's child. I don't roll like that no more. I'm God's child. I don't think like that no more. I'm God's child. I don't operate like that anymore. And I can't hang with you. It's a different kind of battle now. It's a different kind of fight. Hallelujah. They are mightier than you in statue. They look like they have more power than you, but greater is he that is in you than he that stands before you. Whew. So they, they, they saw that the children of Israel were, were, were getting some boldness. They said, all right, well, we got to hit them where they understand it. So they called a prophet. They said, come down there and prophesy on these folks because that's, that's how they understand. So we're going to fight religion with religion. So they called Balaam up and gave him enough money. They said, Balaam, uh, we, got a, we got an honorarium for you, but you got to curse the children of Israel. He said, how much is it? <laughs> Evidently, that's what he said because he went down there. Now, the, the, the right thing for him to do would be say, oh no, them God's folks, I can't, I can't, I can't fool with that. But when they told him how much the purse was, he said, all right, well, you know, it's just, uh, y'all pay me, I'm going to do what I do. So he went down there and he opened up his mouth and he said, I bless the children of Israel. They said, no, no, you can't bless them. We brought you down here to curse them. He said, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to try it again. So they took him over somewhere else and, and he got over there and he, they said, all right now, you got to curse them today. He said, I declare that you are blessed. When God's blessing is on you, can't nobody curse you. The only person that can curse you is you. That's why you got to get that mess out of your mouth, out of your mind, out of your spirit, and begin to speak the things that God has predetermined for your life. You got to let it come out your mouth. I dare somebody to say, I'm blessed. I dare somebody to say, I'm an overcomer. I dare somebody to tell the devil, get under my feet, because I'm God's child. I'm not ready for that yet. I got a, I got a little ways to go. Hallelujah. So here's what God said in verse 10. He says, but I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. Somebody repeat this after me. Say, since God is for me, there is nothing that can win against me say it again since God is for me there's nothing that can win against me say it again since God is for me there is nothing that can win against me now give three people a high five tell them I'm a winner <laughs> oh Jesus all right I, I got two more passages Two more passages before I get finished. Uh, Joshua 24 and 12. Go down to verse 12 with me. He says in Joshua 24 and 12, he says, and I sent the hornet before you which drave them out before you even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with the sword or the bow. 
hornets. Hornets in the bee family. And, and, and when I read that, I said, you know what? See, people who make these shows and cartoons and stuff, they, they had to have read the Bible. Because when I thought, when I saw that, I thought about Tarzan. Y'all remember Tarzan? Uh, 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 Y'all remember that? And then all would come running, the elephants and the tigers and the lions, they come running to Tarzan's rescue because he had sent out the call. Uh, uh, Y'all remember that call? Somebody say it for me. Oh, y'all remember it, all right. You, you know what, I got to thinking, I said, God, there got to be some kind of call for the saints. When we get ready to call the hornets. Uh, all right, let me, let me stop. Th then, then there was this other cartoon called Aquaman. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember Aquaman? He, he sent out this ultra violent sound. And, 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 and would come running the sharks and the octopus and the, you know the whales everything would come because he sent out this ultrasound God said I sent the hornets I sent the hornets which drove them out drove them out before you got there you didn't have to bring no sword you didn't have to bring no bow and arrow you didn't have to bring no lantern and no uh, no light on the on the lantern you didn't have to bring no kerosene lantern he said I sent the hornets I dare somebody say, God, I, I need you to send the hornets for me. Uh, like, see, see, we forget about all the resources God has available to us. There's a lot of things God wants to do for you, but you're so busy trying to fight the battle yourself that you forget that sometimes you just need to rear back and go, ah! what the call is. I say, God, I wish you'd give us a call so that all we'd have to do is run back and say, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Oh, Jesus. Mm, I sent the hornets. They didn't just happen in the area. I sent them. Mm, and they drove the enemy out before you. Ah, I got to move. I got to move. Down to verse 13. Read with me. Verse 13 and 14. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you built not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat. Now therefore... Fear the Lord and serve him how? In sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Ooh. Now, now that first, those first four words in, in, Joshua 24, 13. And I have given. Have is present tense. He didn't say, uh, I, I'm going to or I had. He said, I have. God speaking to his people through the preacher. Touch your neighbor and say, ain't nothing changed. He's still speaking to his people through the preacher. Uh, and so God says, I have given you a land. Uh, shake your neighbor and say, God's talking to you right now. Listen, I have given you a land, Vincent. 
I have given you a land, Sister Lawrence. I have given you a land, Collier. I have given you a land, Roper. I have given you a land, Zephyr Harris. I, God, have given you a land. Now understand, he said, I drove the enemy out. I sent the hornets and drove my. Now what you gonna do with the land? Oh, look at this land. Uh, uh, you gonna plant it? You gonna build on it? You gonna drill on it? What you gonna do with it? I gave it to you. He did not say, I'm going to give it to you. He said, I gave it to you. Some of y'all sitting over there talking about, well, uh, they haven't moved their stuff yet. You better get your bulldozer. Uh, see, some of y'all are too nice to be blessed. I find out when God gives you something, you got to go on in there and say, if y'all ain't out in 30 minutes, <laughs> you know, I would have gave you 30 days, but God gave it to me. At least I'm going to give you 30 minutes. You got to get up out of here because what God has put in me is burning and I can't afford to watch you waste my time. God said, I've given you the land. Ah, Lord, I've given it to you. It's already promised, committed, and positioned for you. I have put diamonds in the ground, but you got to dig for them. I put corn on the stock, but you got to go harvest it. I put potatoes under the ground, but you got to dig for them. I put oil in the ground, but you got to drill for it. I put dreams and visions in your mind, but you got to decipher them and you got to interpret them. I put skills in your hand, and I've given you the mental ability but you have to develop it. I have already given you the land. Now touch your neighbor and tell him, but don't forget who gave it to you. See, sometimes we get blessed and we get deep. You know, now it look like Oprah's trying to come back this way since she got away from the, from the network. She talking more about God, talking more about family, talking more about her own people. For a while there, I thought she was off in Lululand. But sometimes them contracts, well, you know, they gave Balaam enough contract. <laughs> uh, but see, when you get blessed, don't you forget where God brought you from. He brought you from the other side. Uh, he brought you out of idolatry. He brought you out of whoredom. He brought you out of drugs. He brought you out of being demon possessed with alcohol. He brought you out of somewhere that you didn't want to be. And so now that you're here, on the other side, don't forget where your blessing came from. Hallelujah. And then go serving other gods. You got to make a choice today. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to make a choice today. Are you going to serve God? Or are you going back on the other side? Are you going to serve God? Are you going to do it your way? Because you can't have it your way and God's way. It's either God's way or the other way. And, and the other way is on the other side. The other way is on the other side of the flood. The other way is in the other mindset. But who would leave a God that had done all he has done to bring you where he brought you from? Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. He brought me out of a mindset of degradation and saved me and sanctified me and glorified himself in me. Look where he brought me from. I'm not finished but I gotta quit. Stand to your feet. Whoo. You have to make a choice. Yeah, but Bishop, I'm doing the best I can. You need to do better then. Because if what you're giving God is the best you can, then maybe you're lying to God and to yourself. Twenty thirteen has come to an end doesn't mean that you have to make it out of 2013. 
hello, I'm still preaching. But God said, you need to make a choice today. Serve God and let him do what he wants to do in your life. He said, but you can't serve me and still complain and still be angry and still be upset at, at the world and at life. Because whatever I called you to do, I'm going to give you the grace to go through it. Bow your heads, I want to pray. Eternal God and Father, thank you. Hmm. Thank you for your word, Lord. Help us as we are closing out 2013 to realize that you have a plan. We don't necessarily understand your plan, but because you chose us and you called us, we surrender. Help us, Lord, as your children understand that when we surrender, that's when everything opens up. That's when Satan is put in his place and, and the things that you have for us, even though it may not be what we thought it was going to be, we submit to you because it's what you want. Speak to hearts now, God. Speak to them individually. Speak, 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 speak. Help us to make a determination that we are going to choose you. Because there are only two choices. There is no middle ground. Either we are hot for God or we are lukewarm and you said God if we're lukewarm you'll spew us out of your mouth help us to be on fire for you help us to move out of that out of that out of that middle state to where we want to be neutral there is no neutrality in God we either love him with all and give him all or he accepts nothing Mm, help us God to make a choice help us now father we put it in your hands we pray that this year that is going out that as we repent before you oh I need somebody to just open your mouth and begin to cry out before God we repent, Lord, we repent, we repent. We repent of our doubt, we repent of our fears, we repent of our lackadaisical ways, we repent. We repent of trying to control you rather than letting you control us. We repent, God. We repent, Father, of those statues, those things, those people that we have set up as idols. We terminate those mindsets and we surrender to you, God. Uh, somebody just call on him. Talk to him. Oh, come on, come on. Just, just talk to God. He, he's waiting on you now. He's waiting on you now. Surrender to him right where you sit. You don't need to come to the altar. Just surrender to him. It's a personal thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him for yourself. Don't move, don't move. If, 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 you're, if you're trying to go out the door, don't move, don't move. God is talking to somebody. He's talking to you. Ah, God. Oh, 
Talk to him, children. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Repent. Surrender. Don't let this last Sunday go out with the same attitude, the same mindset, the same thing you walked in in 2013. God said, make a choice today. Thank you, Father. Jesus. anybody here in this auditorium that says I need to give my life to the Lord today I need to recommit I need to reaffirm I need to I, I need baptism in the name of Jesus I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost you need to come to this altar I don't want you to leave here as the altar workers are coming I don't want you to leave here saying I didn't have an opportunity give my life to the Lord today. I didn't have an opportunity to get prayer today. I didn't have an opportunity. Sometimes if you've prayed within yourself, you need to have that opportunity to come to the altar and make a reaffirmation to get some reassurance, to get a restoration power. If you're here today and you need prayer, come. If you're here today and you need baptism in the name of Jesus, come. If you're here today and you need the Holy Spirit, come. If you're here today and you need a healing in your body, come. Whatever it is, I'm going to give you about two minutes. If you're coming to this altar, come. Come, come, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about knowing who he is and what he has in store for you. Thank you, Father. One is going down in Jesus' name. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Young man going down in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Anybody else coming? You want prayer? You want to fortify your relationship with the Lord? Come. This is your time. Hallelujah. I don't want all that God has done. Hmm. To go by the wayside because I haven't done all that I can do. We have to make a choice. God says the choice is today. I don't know why he told me to put today on there. I, I kept trying to just put, put the title that says you have to make a choice. But God said put today on there. He's talking to somebody. Today is the day of salvation. Today. Hallelujah. Today. 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 Today, today, today. Oh God.
thank you, Father. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. God is an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as we prepare to receive our tithing offering, if you need a tithing offering envelope, please. Wave your hand, somebody will service you with a tithe and offer an envelope as we give unto the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll call you if you'll come and receive our offering for us on this last Sunday in 2013. Last Sunday. Hallelujah. It's a great opportunity to be at a place that you started out in January. And the Lord have allowed you to come to this time and this Sunday, the last Sunday of this year. I'm so thankful that the Lord have allowed me and my wife to, to live where we live, to drive the cars that we drive, to have the kids that we have, to have all the substance that he provided for us. I'm so thankful and I'm grateful for that on today because there was a purpose put in my heart from the start of the year that I wanted to finish, amen, like I start. Sometimes things happen, we can't finish the way we wish to finish or should finish, but we should make a dedication and a commitment to the Lord to do better, amen. Because by the grace that he has given us to see another day. Wow. Wasn't that amazing? I'm sure some of you all probably saw some saints of old and people uh, that were once former members here. And some faces uh, caused you to have some great memories. I tell you, this church has been in existence for 85 years. That's a long time. But thanks be unto God that he has kept his word. When Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, I know you were blessed by the preach word of God through Bishop Mark C. Talbert. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to sow a seed tonight if you can, as we normally ask people to do at least $5, or maybe you can sow $10. If that word touched your heart, let God know you appreciate what his word did for you. You can scan that QR code and give by way of cash app, dollar sign VLCKC. Go to our raised mobile and let God touch your heart. If you bless God's house, I'm a witness. He will bless your house. Listen, before we go, I want to have a word of prayer with you uh, and ask for God to bless you right where you are. Father, I thank you right now for those that have viewed this message that you have sent, uh, even though we have gone back down memory lane, but your word is still yet alive in us. And what was preached back then still applies right now. So I pray that that mother, that father, that son, that daughter, that relative that has heard this word uh, will search within themselves and ask the question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Uh, what, what do you want me to say? If there's someone who's watching and they have not received Christ in their lives, I pray that they will right now open up their hearts, ask God for forgiveness, and receive you in their heart right now. And I thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So listen, my brothers and my sisters, we'll be back next Tuesday. The same man the same God and the same rhema word that God would have for you. Tell everybody that you can. This is Throwback Tuesday with Bishop Mark C. Talbert. I love you to life and I'll see you Sunday. God bless. <laughs>